Hello everybody and welcome here to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is a channel dedicated to the education of all things vineous around the world. So if you are an enthusiastic amateur, you're really interested about learning specific topics, grape varieties, regions, countries in the world of wine, then we will find it right here. Here. If you are studying, you're a bit of a bookworm and you're getting knee deep into your vineyard studies, then yes, you can find the information here because my presentations follow key text and key syllabus of major wine qualifications. And this video is no exception, looking at the wines of Australia focused on the syllabus for the diploma of WSET. So, Australia is split into six series. This is the introductory series, and this is part three of seven. So this is on climate and geology. Now, anything after this video, that's parts four through to seven, are only available to those of you who go along to www.winewithjimmy.com and find the e-learning portal and subscribe to all the extra exclusive content that you may find. If you do have a comment or questions, please do put that below. Uh, it'd be great to hear from you. Perhaps you live in Australia, you've been to Australia. What do you like about their wines, their climate, and so on? Okay, let's begin with the climatic conditions of Australia. So Australia is large, very large. It's the sixth largest country in the world, and much of it is actually covered by desert and tropical rainforests. So it's too hot and too humid in many parts for viticulture. So many of the central parts of Australia are likened to the Sonora or Sahara deserts. You've got sort of almost Indian sort of subcontinent conditions in the northern parts. So viticulture does not exist. So the vineyards are therefore mainly concentrated in the south eastern corner of Australia, where we find southern Australia, Victoria, New South Wales, Tasmania, and then a little bit over in Western Australia, just south of Perth. I say just, it's 200 kilometres south of Perth. So most of the vineyards lie between 30 and 37 degrees south, which is the equivalent of North Africa and Southern Europe in the Northern Hemisphere. So at these such low latitudes, there's very intense sunlight and UV light in these conditions. There are some vineyards in Queensland to the north and on the island of Tasmania to the south. Um, they lie outside of those latitudes. Tasmania, for instance, which is actually a remarkable and fantastic place for viticulture. It lies between 41 and 42 degrees south, which kind of puts it on par with southern Italy, uh, sorry, southern France, northern Spain, central Italy, that kind of area. So we therefore have various climatic types as the vineyards, yes, they're confined to one area or one major area, the southeastern Australia. There is actually a huge range of climates due to the expanse of Australia. So first of all, you'll see there with the red arrow is the Murray-Darling Basin. Now this is a vast area in the central southeastern part, and that experiences a hot continental climate. However, most of the other regions will actually rely on cooling influences. So many are situated close to the coast of either the Southern Ocean or the Indian Ocean, and that can moderate both daily and seasonal temperatures. And that's showed in this picture here, which is highlighting these coastal areas, which are much cooler in blue that you'll see here. So that's where we find, of course, viticulture for more sort of delicate style wines. A bit on the topography here, 
One thing to note is that due to its landmass, or rather in correlation to its landmass, Australia is actually a relatively flat country. So there is often very little to stop the cooling influence of the oceans spreading quite far inland. For example, you'll see a picture here of Kunawara, a part of the limestone coast. Now, this is in South Australia. Kunawara is actually about 100 kilometers from the coast, yet it's still considered to have a maritime climate due to the fact that those oceanic effects from the Southern Ocean come across here and are not buffered by any extensive mountain range, so they travel quite easily across. So that being said, there are some mountain ranges, of course. The most notable is the Great Dividing Range, which gives away to the Victorian Alps. Now, the Great Dividing Range runs from Queensland to Western Victoria. Producers have been actively increasingly seeking out cooler sites at altitude with the mountain range like the Great Dividing Range in places like Orange, Macedon and also Grampians to produce lighter bodied, more fresher wines. You've only got to look at the Shiraz actually from the Grampians. The uh, Australian Wine Research Institute did huge amounts of research into the levels of rotundone, that is the compound one finds in black pepper and is actually found in Shiraz or Syrah. Now, it's actually much more prominent in cooler conditions. So with the Grampians at high altitude, they found higher levels of these peppery notes due to those cooler conditions in place. Um, also, we need to mention that the GDR, the Great Dividing Range, also creates a barrier protecting many of the southeastern Australian vineyards from tropical weather systems which will come via the Pacific Ocean to the northeast. Now, the regions that lie immediately in the rain shadow, and I'm actually showing you a, a bigger map here, uh, but a lot of the vineyards are in this bottom quadrant protected from the GDR. You'll see that many of the, the mass inside will get very little rainfall due to that protection effect. So river land, part of the uh, sort of central southeastern Australia area, gets an average of 135 millimetres of rain during the growing season. On contrast, if you go the other side of the Great Dividing Range, onto the Pacific north of Sydney, you come to Hunter Valley, which gets about 500 millimetres of rain and has a distinct hot and humid climate due to its location on the Pacific. The low rainfall means that drought is a constant threat in much of Australia and there have been a number of long periods of drought in recent years which are getting more severe. Now in the worst cases, the rivers of the Murray-Darling Basin which are obviously a vital life source, a lifeblood of irrigation water have run low. You'll see here this picture of sheep grazing between rows of dried up vines in a winery located on the outskirts of Mudgee in 2018. And of course, you can further talk about the drying effect that one finds of bushland and, and woodlands and that creates really kindling for the big bushfires that one can find, causing smoke taint that happens within the grape skins and therefore the wine. Now, Australia is one of the oldest of the continents, having been an individual landmass for over 100 million years. Over the millennia, it has developed a wide range of geology and virtually all known rock types can be found. So we find a wide variety uh, from, you know, distinctive soils that people well uh, know, things like Kunawara's 
Terra Rossa, which is this wonderful uh, sort of iron oxide browning clay atop of limestone that you see in that picture, picture just there. And also within regions, there can be great diversity. The McLaren Vale, for example, has 40 unique soil types varying, uh, varying from around 15,000 years to about 550 million years old. Now, I'll go into much greater detail on geology when I go through each of the regions throughout the next presentations. This was just an overview slide to give you a little taster for now. That brings me to the conclusion of this video on climate and geology. Just to reiterate, if you wish to follow on with this series, you'll need to go along and subscribe to the Wine with Jimmy e-learning portal to gain access to exclusive video content and extra resources for your studies. If you do have a comment or a question, please do get in touch. You can do so by dropping me a comment or an email, sorry, a comment or a question on the comment section below. Please make sure you click like and subscribe. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now.